Hello, good people, Ibra here with Hardware Connects and welcome to an investigation video. What are we investigating? Smartphones and how well do they play out in hotter environments? Now, it is summer here in Toronto. More specifically today, we are expected human X values reaching as far as 43. So definitely a hot day and the best way to survive these summer days is to stay hydrated. So take as much as liquids as you can just to survive the heat. Uh, but coming back to smartphones, uh, I really hate using devices during um, hotter environments. More specifically, more specifically when I'm outside checking Twitter or if I'm doing an email, if I'm watching a video or just using my device in general, smartphone just warms up, especially if you're at a higher temperature or if, if it's a hot day outside. So we're gonna test three phones to see if we're gonna be experiencing any performance issues uh, when we're using the device. So we're gonna be running a few benchmarks indoors, uh, do some CPU uh, testing, or I guess a CPU temperature testing, validate or monitor CPU temperatures. I'm gonna use some apps uh, that are available on the Play Store, let's see how that plays out, and uh, do a before and after kind of comparison to see uh, what the differences are, and if we are gonna be experiencing any throttling issues or anything like that, That'll be cool uh, to obviously find out. So uh, let's get into it right after a message from our sponsor. Are you ready? Um, okay, watch this. So that is what the components must feel like inside the H500P Mesh by Cooler Master. Check it out in the description below. Whoa. All right, so allow me to introduce to you the three contenders for this non-scientific test. The first one being the Google Pixel 2. I've been using this device for the past year or so, so it'll be interesting to see how this compares with the two other smartphones that have been recently launched in 2018. Our second contender is the BlackBerry Key 2. My SIM card is currently on this guy. I'm just compiling my thoughts on it. I've been using it for the past week or so, so stay tuned for my long-term review of this uh, device. Uh, so far, I've been really enjoying this guy. And our last contender is the LG G7 Thank You, or Think. We have three different smartphones featuring different specifications. So the G7 features a Snapdragon 845 processor. It is the latest and greatest from Qualcomm. Uh, the Pixel 2 features a slightly older 835 processor from Qualcomm, so uh, that's something to keep note of. And of course, we have the Key 2 that's featuring a slightly slower uh, a Snapdragon 660 processor. So the first round of tests involves me running Geekbench 4 on all three devices, uh, record the scores, and of course, record a CPU temperatures using a CPU monitor app. I downloaded this directly from the Play Store. I'll make sure to link all these applications in the description down below, uh, just for your reference. I should also mention that I will be recording the battery temperatures on all three devices. And of course, I will be testing them both indoors and outdoors to see if there's any difference in that. So yeah, let's just get to this. Well guys, I'm in my car right now. Uh, I had to repark it from the garage. It's actually a lot cooler uh, in my underground parking compared to when the car's outside. It's very hot outside. I can definitely say that. And the phones are right here. I have it placed on the passenger seat. Definitely gonna roast these phones. I really feel bad for them right now because by the time I come inside after an hour and when I start using these, I'm definitely gonna feel the warmth because um, yeah, I'm, I'm really not a fan of that. Uh, also, I will be running Geekbench and of course doing my observations and taking down those numbers while I'm outside. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what the results are. Bye phones. I really feel bad for you guys. All right, here we are, parked outside. Let's, uh, let's go back and get some more work done. It's all about being efficient. So I'm gonna be working on a thumbnail. Yeah, good use of time. All right guys, so it has been a little over an hour. Uh, what we're gonna do is head back to the car and of course validate the temperatures or observe the temperatures. Note the temperatures. Uh, I'm, I'm really hesitant to go inside this car, but uh, we have to do it for the sake of this video. So let's do this. All right, so the best possible way to describe the situation here in this car is that it basically feels like you're inside a hot oven. Uh, you feel like the car itself is sort of baking you. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it is really hot, guys. I mean, 
I'm really curious to see what the temperatures are like, so let's check that out right now. Okay, so I really can't hold one of these phones because it's like it's burning in here. I don't know what the battery temperature is like, but Ben, it is really toasted. I feel like I might have, I feel like the CPU temperatures are like 100C right now because trust me, it is really hot. I mean, I really can't, I really can't take them back. So what I'm gonna do is actually quickly put them in my pocket and then head outside somewhere else and rerun the benchmarks. All right, so brought out the phones outside. I'm gonna start with the Pixel 2 and uh, see what the CPU temperatures are like. Let's see, does the phone even boot on? The phone shut off, huh. So that's quite interesting. Phone turned off due to heat. All right, so I do wanna mention that the G7 did turn off uh, during the time when we were sitting inside the car. So obviously it's due to the overheating issue. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the case here. Uh, it doesn't say it, but um, it doesn't say it on the actual home screen. But uh, I did have to. I did have to turn it on uh, just to get this thing up, up and running. So let's uh, let's run the test on this one. Let's actually see if the BlackBerry is still on. Hey, look! Surprisingly, the BlackBerry is still on. Obviously, apps do take a lot of time to load. You can definitely notice. Um, yeah, there, there's quite a bit of lag, especially when you're. Um, on Instagram or if you're say for example loading up a YouTube video or just YouTube in general um, let me turn on data here for a second yeah the whole yeah it's it's definitely laggy I can definitely notice that performance uh, yep animations are very much laggy not super smooth makes sense because the phone is definitely definitely toasty so I'm gonna I'm gonna run those benchmarks and see how uh, how they stack up all right, so I'm back here at the office after spending about 15 to 20 minutes testing these phones outside in this scorching heat. And boy, I've got to say that the results are definitely noteworthy. So um, as you can see, uh, just by looking at the Geekbench 4 results, you can definitely notice that there is a significant decrease in terms of performance on all three devices, both on the single core and multi-core scores. Uh, next up, we're looking at internal CPU temperatures. And as we can see, once again, we notice a significant increase in terms of just internal CPU temperatures and the readouts as well. So a quick example would be the Google Pixel 2. Uh, we saw 33C versus 53C uh, in terms of CPU temperatures. And of course, when you look at something like the, the LG G7, the CPU temperature was around 36C uh, compared to 45C when we were testing it outdoors. And the same story goes for the BlackBerry. We did notice a significant increase in the temperature as well. Same story goes for battery temps as well. The battery did warm up while it was sitting outside and you can see that obviously with the readouts and the results that i'm showcasing right now now in terms of battery percent loss uh, it's actually pretty minimal so with the blackberry key 2 we started off with a uh, 78 percent battery and we obviously we were left with 76 percent before running the geekbench 4 results uh, outside so not that significant same story goes with the lg g7 and the google pixel 2 so you're not going to lose a lot in terms of battery life but the one thing that I'll obviously admit is that the performance, just using the device in general, without running the benchmarks obviously, is uh, pretty terrible. So you can definitely notice lag in terms of animations. We clearly saw that with the Key 2, but I can say that the G7 and the Pixel 2 uh, were a little bit on the laggier side as well. I should also mention that the phones did shut off. Both these phones, the LG G7 and the Google Pixel 2, did uh, shut off. Uh, mid-time or sometime in between while it was sitting in the car uh, and that's obviously because it realized that the temperatures were getting a lot warmer so it decided to completely shut, shut it off whereas with the key 2 um, it was still on I mean I was surprised by that the uh, internal thermal engineering that's inside the key 2 is probably a little bit better than the LG G7 and the Google Pixel 2 that's what I think but uh, that is something uh, to keep note of. So what did we learn from this non-scientific experiment testing these three phones outside on a scorching hot day? Well, the truth is that uh, using smartphones for a longer period of time outside will definitely affect performance. And we've seen that by the results. We've seen that CPU temperatures obviously increase significantly. That includes battery temperatures as well. And, and you could potentially end up with a smartphone that just wouldn't even turn on when it's uh, at a relatively higher temperature. So we've, saw, we've seen that with the Pixel 2 and the LG G7. The phone just completely turned off. Uh, in the middle of uh, in the middle of testing, so that is something to keep note of. The, each phone has their own characteristic. Of course, it all comes down to thermal engineering, and of course, the way how uh, each smartphone manufacturer has designed to cool and that SOC that's built inside these devices. So that's something uh, that could differ from every smartphone out there. Uh, so. 
as I said, this is just a general testing methodology. It's not sort of uh, testing each individual smartphones. I'm not going to say one phone is better than the other. It's just pointing out the fact that using a smartphone outside, especially on a hot day like this, uh, is it's definitely not ideal. I wouldn't definitely prefer using something like this. Well, I hope you enjoyed this investigation video. Definitely let me know in the comments down below if, you, if you've experienced throttling issues while using your smartphone uh, outside on, you know, especially during the summer. I love using smartphones during the winter though, because you know, when you wake up in the morning, the cold feel that you get when you're just, you know, hold the device is just amazing. But during the summer, no, it's like, it's weird. Your, your hands get sweaty, the whole, yeah, your screen just gets greasy. It's just not that great. So anyways, love to hear your thoughts about this experimental video. And of course, the other things that I mentioned above. I'm Ebor with Hardware Connects. Make sure to check out our new Boot Sequence news channel. Uh, we definitely have up-to-date news on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So definitely make sure to check it out as well as subscribe to our channel for more content. And I'll see you guys in the next one.